I am the writer, director, producer of a little indie fi uh, feature film called Normal Types. I had been looking for distribution for my film and did a little looking on the internet about, I would say it's about 18 months ago now. So it's January 8, 2019 today. And uh, I found this company called Distriber. Now, I reached out to them and spoke with a few different people on a few different occasions. And the message that I kept hearing from this company was that it had kind of been started by a bunch of filmmakers who had, already, uh, who had been screwed over by uh, distribution companies that, you know, promised this and that and never delivered. They just never made money on their films. And uh, that instantly made me feel uh, really safe because I have a bunch of filmmaker friends and over the years we've all tried to uh, figure out how to make money on these little tiny films that we make. So anyway, I went with Distriber. The process from point A to point B from starting with them, paying them, and getting the movie out all in all was about six months. And in that six months there were a pile of things that just didn't work out. And that started with uh, the QA process, which uh, they evidently have editors in-house that take care of things um, if there's any issues. Uh, my film was shot on red, uh, professionally colored. The, the film looked really good going in. I did make one mistake with a continuity deal. They said they would fix it. They charged me for it. Uh, when the film was released, they released the previous version that had the continuity issue. That was the part that really like bummed me out. But anyway, everyone that I spoke with from this company were evidently filmmakers who had been screwed over by other companies in the past, and they really just wanted to make sure they were doing something good for other indie filmmakers. And I believed in that. I really, really did. So uh, the one of the main things that I was sold on was uh, I was told by a few different people that if you get over 200 pre-sales uh, through iTunes, what iTunes will do is put you on the main page. So if you have a film that basically got made for no money and you don't have an advertising budget, if you can go out and get at least 200 pre-sales, uh, it legitimizes your film in that world, at least on iTunes. And we wound up getting, um, uh, I think, around 220. So we've we passed that, that deal. I was doing emails back and forth with Distriber, and they're like, oh, we're so excited for you. This looks like it's going to be awesome. And the, they said, you know, so the day that the movie comes out, you're going to be able to find it on all these, on all these different um, categories on iTunes. So the movie gets released. I believe it was um, uh, March 25th of last year. That would have been 2018. And um, I'm looking for it, and I can't find it anywhere. It's not coming up in new releases indie films, uh, family films, even alphabetical order for new releases. It didn't show up in one category. So I reached out to Distriber and I was like, oh my gosh, like the opening week is like, that's when you make any money <laughs> when it comes down to this. And I was like, oh my, it, you know, if it was on these pages, this film now all of a sudden can be seen by everyone around the world that has iTunes. Um, I don't know how many people that is, but I assume it's a lot. And, uh, no one got back to me. No one had an explanation. And, you know, after some time, I finally got a, uh, I can't remember if it was an email or a voicemail, and it just basically said, oh, yeah, well, we were unaware, but iTunes changed their policy, and they're going for a more manicured um, um, way of films. Be it was basically a nice way of saying, like, big studio movies get preferential treatment and prime screen space, which is understandable. It's a money game. I get it. Um, and they just aren't able to do that. And I understand that if it's not going to go on the front page, you know, that's, that's, that's understandable. But if you go looking for my film normal types on iTunes, uh, and I've done this many different times. And if anybody, uh, can figure out a way to, to, to get a different result, please leave a comment and let me know, email me, whatever. But I have not been able to find, uh, normal types on there unless uh, I actually type the, the, the title in there. Um, we also got it on Amazon. And with Amazon, you actually can. It does take a little bit of searching, but you can find it. The total amount of money that I spent with Distriber was uh, $3,245 just in 
fees, QC, all that kind of stuff that it takes in order to get there. The iTunes bonus features where you can put your own director's commentary and, you know, just bonus feature stuff like when you buy a DVD or, you know, if you go through iTunes, some films offer that. For quarter two and three, which is when I came in of last year, I never got a check or I never got a PayPal. Or no offer to send the money or send a check or no one reached out to me in any way, shape or form. And I started emailing them and say, hey guys, shouldn't I at least get something out of this? I mean, I assume the movie's made a little bit of money. And finally, after, a, you know, again, multiple emails and all this stuff, uh, I finally wound up getting a uh, an email back from someone. They said, oh yeah, we'll PayPal you uh, $508.39. So I was like, okay. $508.39. I spent $3,245, which leaves me with a new balance of $2,736.61. Uh, obviously, um, it did not make money. <laughs> really, really a bummer. On top of that, the total on the graph said it was like uh, $650 or something like that. And they only paid me five hundred and eight dollars, uh, so there was a balance of one hundred and forty-one dollars and sixty-one cents just missing arbitrarily. And um, I talked to two of the main people who worked there, and I won't say their names because uh, I don't understand the legal ins and outs, and I don't want this to come off as slanderous. Uh, but they are two of the main guys that that run the show over there. Uh, the first one, I had it out with him on the phone. He told me that he would get to the bottom of everything. And this was back in uh, early April. We spoke on the phone at length. And after about you know an hour of heated conversation, uh, he promised me that on all the bullet points that we covered in our conversation that he would call me back. Still to this day, I have not heard back from him. Uh, when I had all these issues coming up towards the end of the year and we weren't getting paid for uh, the movie at all, um, I got on the phone with this other guy. And he told me that he would get to the bottom of it. Uh, never heard back from him. Again, this is January 8th. Uh, I believe my last phone call with him was uh, October 30th. So way over two months ago. Still haven't heard back. My film has five star ratings on, uh, let's see, 19 ratings on Amazon, 25 ratings on iTunes. All of them are five stars. Oh, I, I take that back. One four star review on iTunes. If I made a movie that really wasn't that good, I would expect that it wouldn't um, be making that much money. But we're getting great reviews. We're getting great ratings. Again, I'm not trying to malign this company. Um, the reason... The reason how I found Distriber was uh, the documentary, uh, The Resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts. I love Jake the Snake. I grew up watching WWE and Saturday Night Main Event when I was a kid. Um, I got to work on a film with Diamond Dallas Page in 2000, I think, 10. Uh, so I got to spend a week on set with him. And Dallas is a nice guy, very, very cool guy, and he's the one that, you know, rehabs Jake and gets him back on his feet. Evidently, Distriber has done right by them, and they have done very well on iTunes with this. It's a great movie. So I'm not trying to talk bad about this company, but I've reached out to them many different times in many different ways, trying to get my film just to get a fair shake online. And it's so hard when you make a movie with no money and you don't have a print and advertising budget to push it all over the place. And I was relying on these people to just follow through with what they promised. And that's it. If you say you're going to uh, edit a continuity error and then release the movie after charging me money to pay for the, for the problem that is supposedly fixed and then release the film, that's not cool. To promise this 200 pre-order uh, thing through iTunes and now my film can't even be found unless you actually type normal types into the search engine on the movie section. I don't appreciate that either. Um, even with that, I, if that was the only issue, I, I probably wouldn't even be making this video right now. But the issues just go on and on and on. And I wanted to give that information out here because I assume that whatever is going to happen with Distributor in the future, I'm not going to see much money from the film, at least through that avenue, because 
It's just simply not being found. Again, if it was a one or a two or a three star movie, um, understandable. It's a five star film. It's a good movie. At least that's what the audience people who are writing these reviews seem to believe. And I'm so like uh, grateful. And it, it's the very first feature film that I made. It took me almost 10 years to get my first feature film made. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. We made this movie with a, a budget of $15,000. Um, and we shot it out in the bayou in Louisiana. We encountered so many different issues over the course of shooting, post-production. I had to come back to Los Angeles um, to finish all the post-production work. I had to get all of my old school friends to help me finish the movie for free. They all did it for like a percentage point. We busted our tails and this movie is like the essence of it, like an indie film. We all really worked really, really hard to make this thing happen. And all I want to see with normal types is it for it to get a fair shake. And now being that that's not happening, all I want to do is turn around to all you indie filmmakers who are out there and just say, hey, guys, like, be wary. I have two other fr friends that um, made independent films, and they would started doing deals with Distriber and eventually pulled away because they didn't get what they were promised. Uh, one of the people tried to get his film... On, uh, I think their deal was to go through distributor to get it on Hulu. It didn't get in. They promised that they would give them a refund minus like $120 for the processing fee. And uh, as of the last time I spoke with him, you know, some months ago, it had been somewhere around a year uh, since the deal didn't work out. And he still hadn't been refunded the money that, you know, he initially put in in order to get that process moving. I just don't believe that this is a way to treat people. Not it, as filmmakers or just as a business in general. This is not a way to treat people. Like we, 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 we kill ourselves to get these movies made. We try so hard just to come up with something that people like. And God, we wound up like with this film, with Normal Types, we wound up making a movie that people actually like. And all I want is people to have the ability to go out and find it, not just my mom and my sister and some of my friends that I send emails to. I would hope that it could get out to the community. Like we made it about autism and Asperger's and we showed it. We did a special screening uh, in Baton Rouge a few years back and we invited a ton of kids with Asperger's and autism. And at the end of the film, they thought that they had um, watched a film where the two lead actors had Asperger's. That's how well uh, the two lead actors did. So I'm not trying to push a film that sucks. <laughs> I'm getting a little like, like hot under the collar, but at the same time, it's like, man, it's so frustrating. Hopefully some of you um, are getting some nuggets of, uh, of usable information on here. I'm going to be looking into a company called Indie Rights. I've done a couple emails with two of the owners there. Uh, and they seem like really nice people. They do a really great deal where uh, you upload your film with them. They don't cost money out of pocket as far as I understand. Again, I spent over $3,000 with Distriber and am getting you know, less than minimal results. Uh, Indie Rights does an 80-20 split, so anything that they uh, get from Amazon, iTunes, and any other of the uh, uh, online distribution companies, um, you get 80% of that. They take 20% as their service charge or you know percentage fee or whatever you want to call it. So that seems to be a good deal. If they turn out to be legit and I can talk to some filmmakers who have already done that, uh, maybe we'll switch our label or switch the, the film over to that one. That's all I got, guys. Um, I wish all of you indie filmmakers uh, success. Keep making your movies. And if any of you guys have had um, a good... Uh, interaction with an online company that is that is working as your aggregate, that is getting your film out there and seen, and you're actually getting money for that, no matter how little it is, please send me comments and emails and let me know because I would love to turn around and put this information back out into the world so that um, we all can keep making our movies. Like we, we all probably all of us got into this because not because we're trying to get rich, it's because. We love storytelling, we love making movies, and we're just trying to figure out how to like, you know, keep the lights on. I just hope that this does some good for somebody out there that's trying to get their movie seen uh, by the uh, internets. <laughs> anyway, much love, guys. Thanks.